Hello. Tell me, hear me, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. The video or thing, lah. Sorry, Lia. Yes, sir. Only audio is coming. Petition drives us to work first for runners to help you get the most out of every run and workout. With the Ghost Pacer glasses, you get a holographic training partner that you can run with anywhere, anytime. You can set the can you minimize this window, sir? Sorry, madam. Can you can you minimize this window, sir? So maybe. Okay, okay. Problem. Yeah. Going uphill battle. You want to see it, madam? Now. No, no sir. sir. It's that only page is visible, or else uh, you can uh, share or uh, either Windows or uh, the entire screen, sir. So okay. if it is you sharing that entire screen, it will be visible, I think so. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Able to get only screen share. Yes, sir. Now the video yes, sir. Is it's coming now, sir. It's coming now. Reality yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Specifically by run. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Madam, shall we start, madam? Yes, sir. 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 Wishing you all a yeah, very happy and good morning. It's my great opportunity to welcome you all on behalf of SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramabram Campus, for day three, one week international online FDP on next generation computing, key trends, challenges, and opportunities organized by the Department of Computer Science and Applications. Now I would like to invite Respected Vice Principal Admin, SNH, Dr. J. Diliban, to deliver the welcome address. Please, sir. Thank you, madam. A very warm good morning to one and all. 
I am very happy to welcome you all to this day three of uh, one week online international FDP on next generation computing, key trends, challenges, and opportunities organized by Department of Computer Science and Application, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramavaram Campus. I would like to extend my hearty welcome to our chief guest, Mr. Sachin Narayanan Gopijarajan, Senior Project Manager. Infosys Chennai. Thank you, sir. Thank you for accepting our invitation in spite of your busy schedule. And I would like to extend my hearty welcome to the faculty coordinator, Sudha Madam, and the participants from various colleges to this wonderful ATP program. The topic of the today's session is the post COVID, the future trends of information technology. So as you are aware that the COVID-19 has deeply altered the way we live and work and all the way we consume. These changes have led to an explosion of new technologies and innovation. The two major technology trends will accelerate in the post-COVID-19 world, touchless technologies and uh, highly automated robots that augment the human task. So based on these uh, two major technologies, the other technologies uh, such as the IoT, the autonomous driving, quantum computing, and artificial intelligence as a service, the blockchain technology, the cyber security, etc., etc., are emerging. So based on these two major technologies after the post COVID-19. So our guest uh, will clearly explain so what are the major changes and what are the future of uh, the information technologies uh, clearly uh, during this session. So once again, I welcome you all to this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your warm welcome address. Now I'd like to invite to introduce our today's chief guest, Mr. Satya Narayanan Kobikrajan. He is currently working as a senior project manager in Infosys Chennai. He has nearly 18 plus years of experience in information technology industry. He has been associated with Infosys for 14 plus years since 2008 with specific expertise in project management, end-to-end -end project management, software development, software testing and managing automation. In his career, he worked with test management and test execution and gives a great exposure in test process and banking domain. He worked with on-site assignments at Canada, US and UK. He is currently working as Scrum Master Payment SME role in Open Banking for Royal Bank of Scotland or DS. His focus for last 15 years has been in project management, test management, and coordination of testing activities in software development lifecycle of projects for banking, finance, and insurance domain, especially payment domains. He worked with various clients like Royal Bank of Scotland, Simco, Citibank, City Banamex, Citizens, and JBM. All major Canadian banks and implemented business concepts like BACS, CHAPS, FPS, IAS, SEPA. He played a various roles and responsibilities, and I would like to add a few things here. He is leading the Infosys team to develop and test your complex divestment program for rainbow payment applications, budget tracking, effort analysis, and risk management, produce end-to-end -end test and automation strategy, produce test plan for all test phases, lead the testing team to drive all testing activities, implement test DevOps pipelines and deploy relevant tools, support scrum team and delivery with test estimation and planning. Mr. Satinarayan, certified scrum master and ISTQB certified tester. He is certified as AWS Cloud Solution Architect of Associated by IAM Royco. 
it's my great privilege to introduce today's guest and once again a warm welcome for this today's session please sir good morning all uh, i i hope you are able to hear me yes sir yes sir it's audible yes. sir yeah okay thanks for the warm note uh, dilipan sir uh, uh, sudha ma'am uh, indeed it's been a, a very long association from uh, team enforces with srm so we been the day one uh, 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 recruit and uh, it's been a very pleasure to work with always with the srm team so thanks for giving me this opportunity and for the warm note so uh, before we are not you uh, uh, know further do we'll get started with uh, you know uh, just me first give me the uh, context setting here okay so you know right uh, innovation is been a part of life you know it's been for we've been talking for the last two decades especially for the last decade we talked so, so much about automation uh, uh, technical uh, uh, implementations uh, you know automations like iot you know alexa and all that right so post covid what has happened is so industry has changed a paradigm shift wherein right now uh, innovation is going to be a part you know as a business as usual activity is an inevitable parameter and any industry for that matters be it from finance to automobile to uh, uh, to media and communication to hospital sector be it uh, a- education sector we going to have this implemented of automation and innovation is going to be part and parcel of uh, life from day to day onwards so you think about uh, post covid scenarios so cyber security especially cyber security and virtual communication models is going to play a play a bigger role here okay so we'll touch upon you know for the want of time uh, i'm not going to dump too much of theory let's uh, talk about a little bit of videos where i'll be able to touch about how automation is going to be the new covid scenarios uh post uh, no how is going to have a technical impact on uh, each of the industries okay so that way you know we'll start with okay say for uh, example uh, blockchain okay so people have uh, defined you know talk so much about blockchain uh, but uh, you know uh, when you say talk about about cryptocurrencies so cryptocurrencies is just a part in blockchain is not the parameter in blockchain is that's one of a parameter in uh, blockchain okay so w- let me give in a perspective okay what is the importance of using blockchain why there is uh, so much you know hollow law about blockchain so example to give a real time scenario okay say for example i am planning to sell a car okay i am planning to sell a car to uh, sudha ma'am okay so on the my i have a hold a maruti uh, car okay maruti alto so what i decided is i decided to sell the car i placed the ad uh, in the paper and uh, sudha madam showed interest and uh, i be agreed to pay amount of for uh, 2 lakh rupees okay so what has happened is uh, she has sent me the money okay for the want of discussion let me think that you know she has paid the amount in cash okay so what has happened is she said she is going to take the car, collect the car keys from me on a particular date okay the payment date was on an wednesday assuming and she is going to collect the car on friday okay so what happened is on thursday i didn't close that one more person okay say for example uh, 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 a person by name rajkumar okay so he showed interest and he spoke to me on whatsapp and said he wants to close the deal for 2 lakh 10000 okay so what i mean i am a greedy customer so what i thought is i want do not want to the extra amount of 10000 rupees so want to sell the car to 2 lakh 10000 rupees to rajkumar what i will do is i take the 10000 and give back the 2 lakh rupees to sudha ma'am okay so this is this a fair deal no because the deal is already been closed on wednesday but that is not apparent to the customer rajkumar he is never knew that the car is already been sold out i never i didn't either disclose either so what has happened is i sold the car to uh, rajkumar and when a friday when sudha ma'am cars when come for collect the car keys i said ma'am the car is already sold i am sorry about it give i give back the 2, uh, 2 lakh rupees would she be uh, happy about it nevertheless it would not be the case right so she would not be happy about the scenario what has happened right now so to in the same scenario what happens is if you implement blockchain okay blockchain as a concept say for example the same scenario so i am placing that uh, so that i am shows interest she say pays the payment of cash okay if she is paying once the payment is made 
what happens is for example i am able to make the transaction immediately that the payment is made what will happen is she will acknowledge to the uh, 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 rto office stating that i have purchased the card register number so and so from satyanarayana what happens is whether it is in cash for example if it is going to be an online payment immediately the transfer of ownership will happen okay immediately the notification will go to the rto office as well as to the insurance company because for a car we already would have already placed your insurance it will state that the owner from wednesday so and so cut off time the new owner is going to be sudha ma'am is not satyanarayan okay so what happens is uh, implementing the blockchain it is going to be an integration of systems okay you create a blockchain what is means an integration so consensus between different systems is what the importance of blockchain nobody will be able to manipulate the data because the record should be present to different parties at the same time so notification happens such that so the same scenario once i made a transaction uh, so that ma'am either in cash the notification will go automatically to the rto office and to the insurance company stating that the new owner is going to be so that ma'am so the next day even if somebody person show x or y shows interest what will happen is it will uh, so it's up to the so that ma'am to sell it as a second owner okay you understand that right so the it's up to the to the ma'am to sell it as a second owner because the person who rajkumar in this scenario example would be notified that satya has already sold it the transaction has already been made so implementing blockchain you cannot afford to have any loopholes here so i am not able to do any evasion here stating that you know the call is not been sold it will the fact will be very much in the record stating that satya has already sold it and the new owner is to the ma'am and right so probably any person would not show interest and they will understand the car has already been sold you cannot be able to hide the facts here so that is the important blockchain so same example if you think about implementing the same stuff in educational department okay say for example there are lot of bogus fake certificates okay with the same for first name and surname lot of thing happen right so what happens say for example if you implement a blockchain your record will not even you know any tampering of data in your electronic record of your uh, education certificate automatically you will be notified through an email or through an uh, um, through your mobile number that you know someone is uh, able, able to open your file or edit the data so notification will go to the dean to the respect to the different parties so that you know now what up the now what happens is right now the education department everything has been consulted centrally okay it is not diversified so if it is sent stored centrally it is easy for any hacker for any two person if there are two admin people hold you know uh, maintaining that uh, uh, data centrally anybody would be able to manipulate that right if i have to you know get hold of somebody as an admin i want to pay him a hefty amount and ask him to print a certificate of the first name and surname and uh, just uh, you know uh, change the registration number and give, give me a copy he will do that so only the fact will come to come to a story after you know some uh, the person applies for a visa and a us consulate get hold of this they saying that it's a fake data then we will start you know things uh, uh, chasing things backtrack and see why this has happened from there instead that if we need to nip things in the bud the instant the first cramp reaction someone has to be notified immediately such a mal practice is happening implement of blockchain is going to do that okay So registration. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry for the disturbance, sir. So, have you shared any screen, sir? No. Uh, just your uh, talking, sir, or it's. Uh, no, no, no. Blockchain. Okay. 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 Are you able to see the screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible now. Okay. See, there will be lot of jargon here. So, just you know, we'll use this as a you know. uh just a document to see what sort of blockchain you know social networking is happening in blockchain and all that okay so there are public blockchain pub, uh, private blockchain so for say for example the same stuff if would have been implemented in the real estate i mean uh, in the real estate department right so the uh, duplicate documentation right you have one barren document you try to create two child documents okay and two of the person would claim the same that you know say, claim themselves as owners why should that this has happened is someone has taken the parent copy has tampered it with the you know uh, with the uh, legal hair certificate or something they would have manipulated it and this would have happened implement of blockchain would immediately will 
alert the system stating that you know someone is going to tamper a data so once the registration department implements blockchain it is not going to be so copied centrally the data is going to be diversified and each you know uh, even if you need to open the file you need to have a public private partnership which is an encryption decryption key so any tampering of data immediately is going to notify to all the stakeholders say for example if i have bought that property for you know for in uh, 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 in my name and in my brother's name okay and uh, there are people who has given the witness signature for uh, two or three more parties so what happens is all of our five of the people will get a notification that you know so and so document has been tampered for so and so for some for so and so date and time so immediately i'll go to the registration department and find out why my file has been open what is the reason behind it so all this will you know able to nip things in the bud to avoid the duplicate duplicate documentations okay so i'm giving different perspectives the real life example we talk about talk about selling a car and after the dedication department bogus certificates and after that right now you know we are talking about uh, 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 the land documents registration department where you know blockchain the concept of blockchain would be able to eliminate all this type of mal practices okay so cryptocurrencies when you talk about cryptocurrencies uh, you know the rbi has not approved in india okay cryptocurrencies has not been approved in india so what happened so in uh, for worldwide you know there are companies and uh, banking industries we have started working on cryptocurrencies so cryptocurrencies nothing is like a goal so you need to you know agree to a value to a, for the particular current you know buying a cryptocurrencies and uh, it is also volatile subject to the market condition it may increase and may uh, even it may the price of the cryptocurrencies will fall down okay so what happens is it is like a nero so why in uk uh, uh, example for european nation they uh, come to a common denominator to find a euro is because to have a transaction globally within the european nations so likewise cryptocurrency is worldwide now okay so once you have a cryptocurrency you are able to make a transaction worldwide it is worldwide accepted no foreign exchange or thing and uh, one of the limitations of cryptocurrencies is so even if you put you know buying a foreign currency say for example to, today you you know you are planning to uh, go to uh, switzerland okay or you want to go to us so what happens is you go to find the local currency you either get euro or us dollar you go to the bank and you you know exchange your inr money to us so some way or other there is a tracking process to understand why you are make you know buy, buy the us dollars or in euro currencies and who has got that and you know what inr money you been paid so there is a tracking mechanism here whereas in terms of uh, blockchain cryptocurrencies so there is no tracking mechanism here so that is what there is a taboo uh, from the banking side especially rbi is much uh, you know jittery about it because you know especially uh, as a concept where you think about overall blockchain is very important and it has a significant value in playing in the industry but crypto when it comes to cryptocurrencies it is easy for the terrorist organization or for the hackers yeah, you would have heard that you know some of the hackers would have hacked the data and in terms of asking for money they would expect for a cryptocurrencies why is because you know if you make a transaction an electronic transaction or ca cash it would be able to catch hold of the person identity instead that you want to pay them in cryptocurrencies it will not able to understand where the cryptocurrency the person is going to you know pay or is going to turn that into money so there is no tracking mechanism here so that is why you know there is a big uh, limit you know reservations are taboo about using uh, uh, cryptocurrencies in blockchain okay and uh, some let me let me think i will give you a video and then we'll move on you are able to see the video oh yes sir yes sir okay Glory offers the most flexible, efficient, and reliable check processing solutions. This is the MICR Check Reader Sorter.
the MICR check reader sorter's outstanding features include an automatic large volume capacity document feeder that can hold up to 500 standard checks. The reliable MICR reading functionality can recognize both E13B and CMC7 font magnetic characters. The latest inkjet printing technology for rear endorsement supports up to four lines of standard text printing and offers the programmable bitmap graphics that allows users to simulate logo or stamp endorsement. The most up-to-date image capture technology provides color, black and white, grayscale, and color UV image scanning. The system, under program control, allows for up to three separate images of a document to be captured simultaneously in each pass. Reliable adaptive infrared and ultrasonic sensors detect and reject the double-fed documents with high accuracy. A straight-line document transportation provides a stable and high-speed moving document at a maximum of 270 documents per minute without interrupting the processing. Okay, uh, let me talk about this. This is about the uh, image capture, okay? So for post-COVID, what happened is uh, people have been uh, stayed home, right? So uh, though they need to make a transaction through checks, okay? So in terms of, uh, you know, in India, we use check for mortgages, loan, car loans to convert to ECS and all that, okay? Whereas uh, worldwide, uh, you can get into a Walmart store, you want to buy, buy a a TV or an iPhone, still you'll be able to make it, give a check and it will be accepted by, by the cashier and uh, you can take the product, okay? But what happens is the Walmart has to turn, the, you know, put that, uh, he's just get, taking hold of the check. He never knew whether the check is going to get processed successfully or is going to get rejected uh, for fraud transactions or uh, non-sufficient funds, you never know, right? So what happens is you capture the image immediately it goes to the bank and goes for reconciliation okay so you would have went to you know i'm i'm sure that you guys you guys would have got a chance to uh, you know take go to the atm and uh, take, take cash you would have seen uh, the atm machines okay there will be a logo which is called the ncr ncr and unisys okay these are the manufacturers of that machine okay you understand uh, the software is different and the hardware is different this is a hardware machine where in a, if it's going to be in HDFC ATM, an HDFC software is going to be installed and it is going to talk to the HDFC, HDFC servers, okay? So, that but the hardware mission NC, um, a manufacturer is the NCR, okay? So, who have given this hardware mission? So, who are producing the hardware missions and will be supplying to the different banks. So, what happens is any particular bank, Indian Bank, State Bank of India, City Bank, JP Morgan Chase, they will buy those ATMs and they will install the software. That is why, you know, the bank insists to take uh, use their respective ATMs only. So, for example, what happens is you could take an um, uh, ICIC ATM, go to uh, HDFC Bank ATM and you put the card. So, you would have noticed the difference. The immediately you would have put on HDFC card to the HDFC ATM. Immediately, the response time will be seamless. Within few transactions, you will be able to take the money. Whereas, you put on car, your respective bank and another other ATMs, it is going to take a while. What happens is the request will go to the respective HDFC server and it will notify, actually notify that that is, is not a request coming from the HDFC bank, it was an elsewhere, it's a non HDFC bank. So it will route the request in terms of in in, uh, in front of HTMC server and get the response from the respective bank. Yes, I'm happy to you know uh, to give that back the cash and the person has an account of sufficient funds and give back the response to the HTMC server and HTMC server will send back to its respective ATM. So that is why there is a turnover on time for you to take the money in the, if you you are usually using your ATM cards in other banks ATM. Okay. So the same way, the same type of machines have been used here, where you need to capture the images. Why you need to capture the images on the same day? Why it is so important? 
say for example i give you a check okay and i have to give it in a today's date so why is that is important for walmart to re do the reconciliation on the same day because it has to deposit the money on the same day right when you try and check you are not saying that you know you are going to uh, you know you, you are going to write a check in favor of somebody right so i cannot write a check for myself so what happens is i am going to write a check in favor of somebody so in this example is going to be walmart so walmart has to do the take the put the money in the account because the product is already been taken away by the customer so if i don't do, do the reconciliation transaction on the same day the bank is not going to be going to be the loser right so what happens is it does so it has to capture the images so the image capture what happens is in a check it will capture the check image and the check amount it is going to endorse when you say endorse you would have seen the image at the back of the check it is going to print the amount it is going to print the amount and as well as the invoice number so that i need not hold the invoice number i can throw it off you understand what i'm saying so example you have a atel bill you need to pay a rupees for 500 rupees and the atel account number is 1234 example okay what happens is you give a check for 500 rupees and a person name is say uh, uh, peter so what happens is at the back track, back of the check it is going to write the amount as 500 rupees and account number as 1234 and the back of the check so that i am able to draw a logic between which which invoice i am that the check has been cleared okay say for example for the same home loan it will say write the, the amount is 25000 and the home loan account number is this is so that i can throw the invoice okay i need not you know segregate the invoice and i will just able to capture the check images and if i see the back of the check image i will able to see what is the final amount and what is the uh, account number where which the check is been cleared okay let me see how that You able to see the image, see the video. Oh yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. so all you know the hyundai plant uh, as well as uh, the uh, bmw plant uh, uh, in mahindra city extensively they use uh, you know uh, uh, the automation for especially for their assembly okay so uh, what happens is uh, when you talk about you know uh, in iot or uh, robot process automation machine learning so the machine will be tuned with uh, you know writing algorithms okay So when you say algorithms, say for example in the BMW plant, what happens is it will be feed feed it with the images on which inclination degree a particular bulb has to be fixed or a particular uh, uh, engine has to be fixed. Okay, and it will be also feed it with the wrong side side of the information. So how the image should not be the case. For example, uh, if a bulb has to be fixed, yeah, the front of your gear, gear or the uh, rear images, it will be fitted with the data where, if an inclination from the 45 degree, if it is going to be moved to 47 degree or 50 degree, it is a wrong image. So, how the assembling is to be made with the right image, fitted with the right images and the wrong images. So, the algorithm is feed the data with the images, and within few seconds, it is going to make the decision making that. it will be able to assemble the uh, machine um, uh, assemble the 
equipment in the in, in the car in the particular sizing and with the particular description. Okay, so the reading is going to take within few seconds. Okay, so that it will be able to fit in. So it all it knows is how the uh, car is to be fitted with the right with the uh, right sensor with the right inclination where it is being fixed exactly on which angle. And what is if the angle is wrong? What is the wrong image? So that you know it will be able to do the self correction. So once it gets tuned to that, you will start you know enhancing your algorithm on on and on and on. So that you know earlier you would have taken for taken one minute, then you would have taken thirty seconds, twenty seconds, or over a period of time, then it will be seamless for doing you know manufacturing assembly with no time. So that there is no room scope for manual intrusion here or manual errors here. Okay, so these algorithms have been write, uh, written in programming languages like C, Python, okay, it's extensively Python, okay, because you know Python is uh, very you know uh, user friendly and uh, you know the bound for errors or issues is going to be very less. The scope for issues on using for recompilation, everything is going to be very quick, so that you know you'll be able to lines millions of code within no time. So all this robot process automation extensively used algorithms written in uh, Python. Okay, or C language. Okay, so you understand the importance of C language, right? C language, you're able to improve a memory space. See, when you talk about pointers, so what is a pointer, right? So, pointer, you know, for integer, it occupies two bytes, character occupies one byte. It and it is able to point out to a particular address location. Why you need to know the particular address location to improve your memory? Okay, say, for example, you get into a class. Where the you know, faculty ask you to sit, sit in. So one person sits in the first row, the second person sits in the second row, and the other person sits in the last row, obviously. So what happens? The faculty immediately enters will say, she will say, why you want to scatter, squeeze and sit in the same row so that you know the other person will be able to follow. Okay. So what does faculty is able to understand the people are scattered different in different locations, right? So it, if you know the address of one variable, you will be able to put that next value to the next address here. So optimal utilization of space is all about pointers here, right? So the same way you will be improve, your, you know, using pointers language and C language and Python, you will be able to write robust algorithms where you'll be able to understand, you know, how the machines have been tuned and uh, what is the production errors and identify the scope for production errors and uh, you know if there are going to be any issues in the you know manufacturing and uh, assembling or electro electrification. Anything of that, you know, you will be able to fix that quickly, okay, with the help of this programming, okay. And even in Tamil Nadu, in uh, Ariyalur, uh, Zwari Cement, I think, okay. So even they use automation extensively, okay. By and large, in Mumbai, in uh, Bangalore, there are uh, sectors, industries, even in Foxconn, uh, you know, they are using automation, okay. So automation is going to be part and parcel of every uh, to every day to day industry, okay. You go to an Apollo hospital, they talk about, you know, paperless uh, uh, prescriptions, right? So you type in your uh, uh, patient ID code and the doctors they subscribe the medicine where you'll be able to take a printer, no paper. They will not give you any half, soft, soft copies. Everything is, uh, is uh, no hard copies. Everything is going to be soft copy and you are able to manage it with the help of IoT only, okay? You talk about Alexa devices, right? Everything has been tuned uh, with the help of uh, IoT and uh, machine learning. Okay, thereby you know you're able to know you'll be able to switch on AC from uh, sitting in uh, remote. So uh, you will uh, have an Alexa inst installed, and it is be connected through an internet. Without the internet, you will not be able to manage it, right? So from a remote place you're coming from, you know within few kilometers you're going to hit home. You want you know the moment you want to get into your home, you want to have your AC on uh, so that you know the temperature is pretty much cool at the home. So you ask Alexa to switch on your AC immediately. So everything has to be connected through internet. So if it has switched off your internet, then you're not able to control your Alexa, right? So all this being connected through the devices, gadgets is all through IoT, okay? So that way, you know, the machine learning will start talking through IoT, through the IoT, through the devices, connectivity, Bluetooth, and all that, okay? In today's busy world, staying fit and active is an ongoing uphill battle. 
We need to make every workout count. As every runner knows, competition drives us to work harder, go faster. But when we're on our own, performing at our best is nearly impossible. Sometimes getting the most out of each workout requires a little help. Meet the Ghost Pacer, the ultimate running partner. The Ghost Pacer is the world's first mixed reality headset designed specifically by runners for runners to help you get the most out of every run and workout. With the Ghost Pacer glasses, you get a holographic training partner that you can run with anywhere, anytime. You can set the route and pace for each run through the Ghost Pacer app, giving you that extra competitive edge you've been looking for. Want to run a five minute mile or shatter yesterday's personal best? The Ghost Pacer will keep you on track. Through the mobile app, you can get access to thousands of runs in your area and connect to a community of millions of other runners. With the Ghost Pacer, you can race your friends, even when you can't run at the same time. Run against an avatar that matches their route and speed from a previous workout, giving you a competitive advantage and bragging rights. And as you get faster with the power of maximized workouts, the Ghost Pacer is the partner that will improve with you. Like no product before it, the Ghost Pacer is designed to push you to new limits. Anything worth doing takes effort. But with the Ghost Pacer as your partner, you won't be tackling your goals alone. Okay. Uh, this extensively talks about you know uh, using augmented reality and virtual reality. You understand what is augmented reality, right? So augmented reality is uh, the enhanced images to the uh, through the through a computer or uh, through your goggles where you will be able to see the enhanced picture images. Okay. So here in this example, this is a virtual coach. Uh, so based on your you know stride, your input, and uh, based on your efficiency. It is going to the the virtual coach is going to motivate you, and in order to give inputs, you know how you improve you improve your run. Either it is going to be a marathon or a hundred meters. That is going to give lot of inputs, more keep motivating you. There will be a virtual runner as if you're in the image in the video. There is going to be avatar who is going to run in front of you while you start, you know, wearing this uh, goggles. Okay. So and where it is going to motivate you, and uh, there are no, there are a lot of things which is catching up right now, right? There are a lot, a, a lot of people who are doing uh, online training and all that, you know, uh, or yoga training, online training. Uh, and right now, it is an on step ahead where you know once you start wearing the Google goggles with our augmented reality and virtual reality. So augmented reality is about what? So say with the help of the images with your mobile app, you are able to get into your mall. You want to see where the best you want to buy a shoe or you want to go check into a hotel. So where and you go to, you know, the, uh, through the mobile, it is going to pump up, you know, what is the uh, rate rooms available for a particular hotel. So you start through the viewing through the mobile app. It is going to give this information around you. Okay. So if you just give you a 360 degree view around the space or in the mall, it is going to provide you with the information where's the best prices available for the shoes, what sort of shows available, collections, which is you know fitting with your foot size and all that. Okay. Virtual reality, you know, most of the industries like you know, IKEA, for example, you want to understand whether this cart or a sofa is going to fit in your home, fit in your room. It is if you once you're able to give your size dimension of your room and hall that I can, with the help of software, I can, it is going to use the virtual reality and tell you whether it is worth buying this, uh, you know, uh, furniture and whether it will suit your home. Okay. Likewise, for example, Royal Rice, Royal Rice or BMW cars, it will also show virtual reality where you'd be able to enhance your images, feature, what sort of technology you want to use and what sort of color you want to choose. Say, for example, Rolls Royce says it has variety of colors. It's of like lakhs of colors. Even you bring in a horse hair, the color of your horse hair, the minute of the color, it will be able to capture that image, able to extract that color, and it's going to give you a build a car, a customized car. Uh, which is going to suit your taste for a particular car for a car. So it is going to do that with the help of uh, virtual reality. 
so it is going to give you a 360 degree view where you will be able to provide with lot of information so augmented reality as i told you where is going to be a software pixel we are going to talk about that let me so so this is a using computer technology virtual reality whereas you know it is a digital technology where you use the augmented reality with the help of the mobile which is able to use it and virtual reality even it is used for computer based trainings okay where it is going to give you with enhanced images you know how is going to work uh, uh, with the uh, providing you with the right information okay so uh, you nevertheless you know we, right now we are talking about a lot of uh, e schools e trainings after post covid there is going to be a lot of universities which is going to come up with the with the use e e training platform okay with all the everything is going to be online online and you are able to you know get a overseas degree certificate sitting up in india so all this is quite possible okay so everything is going so when you put computer based information they have to talk about you know different case studies and all that thereby they will be able to bring all this information online through virtual reality images and videos six ways blockchain can be used in financial services blockchain has been called the new internet and is quickly propagating and transforming economies infrastructures technologies and businesses including those in the financial sector how does blockchain in the financial industry work exactly well in this video we will take a deep dive into the topic blockchain technology allows the entire financial services industry to optimize business processes by effectively sharing data in a more transparent and more secure way blockchain technology is quickly reshaping the landscape of financial services as both b2c and b2b consumers aim to gain a more authentic view into their personal and business finances current profit pools and business models are becoming quite inefficient and are being forced to deal with the risk of complete disruption What are the benefits of blockchain technology in the financial services industry? Although the benefits are already quite extensive, let's look at six of those benefits. One, payments. Thanks to standalone cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, which has since its introduction to the global financial stage been viewed as a threat to the control of monetary policies, many central banks are shifting toward payment systems that integrate with blockchain technology. Two, funding and investing. When blockchain is used to raise startup capital or to create brand new service offerings, these transactions can now be completed in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. In exchange, investors may receive tokens that represent expansive future value. Three, accounting. Since blockchain is a shared ledger that processes transactions in real time, it has the potential to improve accounting efforts by lowering overall costs, which are associated with the reconciliation of ledgers and freeing up resources. Four, identity. The ability to verify customers is one of the key cornerstones of the financial services industry. Thanks to built-in cryptographic protection, blockchain technology could potentially offer an optimal identification protection model, allowing for increased form source security and data protection. 5. Inexpensive. Yes, compared to many of the more traditional methods of moving funds through banks and credit or merchant systems, blockchain payments are both inexpensive and fast. With built-in forms of identity verification, users don't have to go through any extra steps. Six, fraud is reduced. Hackers have the potential to threaten almost every facet of the financial services industry. However, common forms of fraud, such as DDoS attacks, are significantly reduced with blockchain technology in place. What awaits us in the future of blockchain technology in the financial services industry is expansive functionality when it comes to transparency, identity, and transactions. okay so i think you uh, know uh, this is what pretty much what we saw okay uh, and when we talk about removing uh, uh, the bitcoin aside other the safety features is everything is going to be blocked so it is going to be a shared ledger as i told you you know the electronic records it is going to be distributed it is not going to be centrally it is going to be not be residing somewhere so everybody is going to hold a copy okay say for example if you all your all of your degree certificate all of your degree certificates If hundred of a uh, hundred of you people, you know, holding your degree certificates, and every student holds a copy of another student, okay. So what happens is it's going to be foolproof. Any data it is going to be tampered. 
so the hacker cannot go in each of the 100 students and is going to able to replace the data or hack the data it's quite impossible whereas if it's going to be centrally stored it makes a life easier for the hacker to go and re make a replacement which would not even come to your knowledge it would not even come to the hod's dean's knowledge and even if somebody who has no I'm, I'm able to manipulate with the data entry operator sitting inside an admin room will be able to manipulate that right so it will not even come to our knowledge at all. So all some of the issues which is right now coming up in education industry and uh, real estate department, especially all these issues has happened over a period of time and nothing is able to able to brought into the system to eliminate this. So implement of blockchain as an overall concept, it is going to help you to have the, the divertised data encryption process so that any tampering of data, one you will be able to tamper one copy if it's stored centrally. 100 copies, not possible. Million copies, not possible at all right so implementation of blockchain is going to give you that provision okay all of prosthetics is developing quicker by the year Doctors, engineers, and students are all striving to design more effective artificial limbs that can help amputees, sufferers of paralysis, live not only more comfortably, but also to thrive. Today, we're looking at the top five bionic prosthetics that look like they're from the future. Open Bionics Hero. The Hero Arm by startup company Open Bionics is the world's first medically approved 3D printed bionic arm. This prosthetic of the future is controlled by the users of muscles, giving them an unrivaled lifelike sensation. The technology works through a number of sensors housed within the bionic arm socket. The highly sensitive sensors detect muscle movements and trigger the hand to respond accordingly. The bionic hand and fingers of the prosthetic are controlled using the same muscles as a biological hand. So learning how to use the device is incredibly straightforward, which is very important for any amputee rehabilitation process. Each hero arm is entirely bespoke. The user's arms are scanned to create a perfect 3D printed socket, providing a comfortable fit that also increases usability. The Hero Arm comes in three different hand sizes and two different arm layouts, making them suitable for all ages and sizes. Intended for everyday use, the Hero not only gives users the ability to hold objects such as food, tools, utensils and pens, but also allows them to get dressed easily, open doors and even type on a keyboard, all essential for boosting independence. It should be noted that the manufacturer advises against using the bionic arm in potentially high-risk situations in case it fails or the battery dies. This includes driving, any form of contact or extreme sport, and also using a firearm. The Hero Arm has some amazing features and tons of personalization options, but those aren't the only reasons why it's set to become the future of prosthetics. The Hero Arm starts at just $3,000, which might sound like a lot of money. However, comparative prosthetic arms with similar features can often cost skyward of $50,000 and even as high as $100,000. Open Bionics can also fit, print, and deliver a tailor-made arm in around 40 hours, far quicker than any other company. University of Utah's Bionic Leg. When thinking about prosthetic legs, you might picture a pair of running blades or a metal pole attached to a trainer, but times are changing and prosthetics are evolving. The University of Utah's bionic research team is at the forefront of prosthetic development, and their latest bionic leg is by far their most advanced to date. Technology that allows users to control their prosthetics with exaggerated body movements have been around for quite some time, and even mind control devices are starting to crop up here and there. But the University of Utah is taking a completely different approach. What if prosthetics could think for themselves? Robotic and AI technology are moving at an alarming rate, so why not implement that technology into amputee prosthetics as well? Dr. Lenzi, who leads the team, set out to make two major fundamental changes. First, to create a powered prosthetic that is lighter and stronger than a biological human leg. And second, to develop a leg that can think for itself and knows how to move naturally in any given situation. The results are staggering and users are astonished by how different this new prosthetic operates compared to anything else currently available. Dr. Lenzi's theory is that AI-powered prosthetics feel more effortless than those controlled consciously, making them far easier to adapt to. The bionic leg allows users to move around more naturally when doing everyday tasks, such as climbing a flight of stairs, stepping up a curb, even standing up from a chair. And this is just the start. Although Dr. Lenzi's bionic leg is still in the early stages, the development of the technology is still promising. Being lighter and more powerful than a biological leg means that this robotic limb could provide users with abilities not available to regular able-bodied people. 
robotic prosthetics such as these could turn those previously considered to be disabled people into amplified bionic humans. Mr. Burkhardt's brain implant. Okay. Uh, so this is a process. Okay. So they essentially use machine learning. Okay. So there will be uh, interprets with the muscles, uh, brain activity. Okay, either with your pattern of your foot. Okay, if it's going to be prosthetic limbs, it is going to understand. You know how the intensity of the other foot is going to be. You have uh, one normal foot, and if you don't have a, another leg, it is going to use your biological limbs where it is going to understand the pressure intensity. Okay, with the 360 degree view and in, read the information through the machine learning. Thereby, I'll just touch upon quickly about the algorithm subtract. Okay, so artificial uh, artificial hands are based on the electromography, so which is going to you know take images and also capture information based on the ECMG image recognition, and it is also able to take the signals with high participants with using stuff like you know with the hand movement like you know cylindrical, spherical, lateral, hook, so that you know it is going to take the read the information and process the information with you know 723 rgb images with 24 algorithms so there's going to be a google net there are a lot of algorithms which is available which is going to able to control the software you know such that you know it is able to understand if there is going to be any obstacle you would have stayed, say, seen in the image in the treadmill right where you put in an obstacle it is going to able to take the foot and it's going to overgo and place the foot on the next step so it is going to, it is quite possible with all that also, even you would have seen the earlier video about, you know, about the mind reading, okay? If your mind wants to take a glass of water, you know, with your inputs, which is going to the control to the particular limbs, it is going to take the electronic inputs and it is going to act accordingly with the help of machine learning. So machine learning, IoT and charging of the, that is what the charging mechanism is limitation here. So that is what they suggest in order if you drive a car, make sure that you know your uh, 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 your charging has all been done hundred percent. Because you know if your charging is less and in the middle of the training you're driving, if you are able to not able to control your bionic limbs, it is going to be uh, you know disaster. So that is what you know some of the limitations about it. Okay. So that is what the new bionic club collaboration with the Imperial University. So there's a the university which you know they do extensive R and D about using this artificial limb with the help of machine learning and IoT. Okay. So let me take a pass here. So uh, any questions? Uh, it's eight minutes left. So you, uh, how did you find this uh, interesting, guys? Uh, you are, uh, because I'm giving a lot of videos because it be able to, if I'm going to dump you with a lot of theoretical information, you will not be able to correlate stuff. At least, you know, if you're able to see the videos, you will be able to understand where it is getting implemented in day to day's life, right? From like, uh, no automation in Hyundai company or BMWs, okay? So using virtual reality, blockchain, these are the day-to-day -day industries, you know, which extensively make use of this IoT, machine learning, robot process automation, blockchain stuff, and all that. Any questions? Yes, oh dear sir, you have any queries, you can post it in the chat window. Please send my mail ID. Okay. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, you can, um, this is my LinkedIn ID. You can find it as Satin Arayanan Gopika Rajan. Okay. And uh, that's my email. I think if uh, participants, if, uh, if you want to, you know, in unmute, you can raise questions. Or even after this discussion, you can connect me on LinkedIn. Okay. And uh, you can say share questions. Okay. So, hello, sir. Hello, yeah. Dr. Pranya Matukar. 
So, uh, which software is prefer for AI and ML nowadays? Which software is best for AI and ML? Machine learning, I, Python and C language, you know, it, both the languages are very good, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So, mostly, uh, MATLAB is you have to use for uh, machine learning. The only Python is sufficient. Yeah, you can use that, yes. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and uh, one information, you would have seen IITK, right? IIT, IIT Kanpur. Um, I, I also, last the, last year, they have started rolling out uh, the virtual uh, program, the, the online degree program, uh, which talks about uh, 5G technologies, um, uh, data science, uh, cyber security, and two more, okay? Because this is the first time without writing GMAT or any entrance exam, uh, you will be able to go through. But only for the experienced people, for IIT Kanpur, they have started uh, rolling out this. Okay, so any people's laterals with two years, one year experience also, you can try to apply that. Okay, because uh, uh, they are all, especially this degree specialization is about the using the latest trends in the IT industry only. Okay, so make use of that. Okay, so right from, from the fundas, okay, start questioning, okay. So we use a lot of campus recruitment, uh, okay. Uh, uh, some of the people, it's quite, you know, understandable. They will not able to understand wh what is the difference between while and do while, okay. Uh, just and give an example. So ask you what is the difference between while and do while, okay. So while is something what? So understand stuff, you know, uh, not just theoretically don't mug up, understand logically what is the difference, okay. Say, for example, if it is a closed door, okay, and you may say, pick a person, uh, sit inside the room, okay, and the security and, and the person, uh, someone, you know, uh, make a security out, sit outside the door and make the person to and say, tell the security, make the person enter only if the person is Raj. So, what will happen is only if the person is Raj, the person will be able to enter or else reject. This is wild condition, okay. Say, for example, I'm sitting in the closed room. And I make the security inside the room, I make the security stand behind me. And what happens is this door is open. So the person, the person by name uh, uh, Kumar enters and the security behind me asks, are you Raj? No. Then the person will be asked to move out. Okay. Then the next person comes, Raj himself. Then the security asks, are you Raj? Yes. Then the person will be asked to sit. In this example, how many times does Kumar entered? The answer is one time. Because this is do this is do while do while is the condition first gets, gets executed only then the condition is checked because the condition is checked at the rear that is why I'm giving an example that my security stands uh, stands be inside the room behind me so one person has entered the fact has happened you cannot retrospectively go and fix it the person has entered has entered right so that is do while do while is the person first so the fact first happens then checks the condition so by default in do while the condition will execute at least once that is the underlying answer the condition the do while the personal if the, the answer is the difference between while and do while is while will get executed only if the condition is true whereas in do while regardless whether it is true or false it will execute at least once because the door is open the person who has entered x away would have entered is entered you cannot go and fix that right so until the true condition is true the person will keep entering on and on so by default the answer is by default the condition will always execute once whether this condition is true or false, that is do why, okay? So understand conceptually, okay? And uh, understand the logic behind it. Why you need to run a for loop, why is inheritance, what is polymorphism, what is encapsulation, right? So what has no shape, that is polymorphism, right? So you have different roles to play. This is another example for polymorphism, overloading, overriding, right? You pass a value, you know, swap into A comma B. I put a value 1 comma 2 becomes 2 comma 1. I pass a value 3 comma 4 becomes 4 comma 3, right? So what is encapsulation? Why inheritance, right? You inherit genetically from your parents, right? Likewise for inheritance. So you what is the use of inheritance? Optimization of code, right? Say, for example, I have to write a date validation. Once I get into the software industry, I've been asked to do a date validation. I have five uh, screens I pass into five uh, programmers. If each programmer write an uh, uh, date wheel validation for DD, MM, MM, DD, YY, it is cumbersome, right? Doesn't make sense. Instead that, write a common functionality, use an extensive word, try to inherit it, right? When you inherit, you inherit the parental characteristics, right? So one person able to date a date validation and other four programmers, you inherit it. 
to your programming so that you start focusing on the other programming for it comes to date validation just keep calling this common validation which has been written using inheritance these are the concept which has been in, used in the industry you know programming language in order to facilitate this process so unless otherwise you understand what is you know inheritance why using a try cache block and all that you will not able to do a good programmer once you get into the programming industry okay unless you understand the essence and the efficiency of why you need to use that and which scenarios you need to use that you will not able to implement that okay okay guys on the dot 1030 yes sir we got one more question sir yep back can be get Where can we get IIT Kanpur course details? I will share it uh, to uh, 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 to the professor. Uh, okay, I will share it to uh, to the sir. I will I will ask you to send answer send it to you guys. Okay. Um, yes, dear participants, do you have any queries? You can unmute and ask, or please post your queries in the chat window. madam please give feedback link yeah just just a minute ma'am wait a minute oh uh, anything else from participants i will definitely share that information about the iit kanpur okay uh, through the hod sir i'll send it to or through to the man uh, i'll share it through you guys you can have a look okay so it's really pretty much interesting so they are touching about the latest technologies give it a try okay and the more importantly don't take career by chance okay which is more important when you take about about your pg where you want to choose mba or mbe okay uh, to understand your interest okay and try to think about you know even if it is core or it doesn't matter okay uh, either you do make use of this iot all this latest technology 5g everything is going to be part of both of core and as well as an in it industry okay so unless otherwise you have the urge to understand this technologies uh, working in any sector doesn't matter okay sure guys uh, it's nice talking to you thanks for this wonderful opportunity wishing you all the best and uh, hope every one of you go through uh, your respective streams and uh, have a successful uh, career ahead okay Is there anything else, ma'am? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'm most sure we are into the session. And my sons, sincere thanks to our today's guest, Mr. Satyanarayan Kobikarajan, for being here with us today in spite of his busy schedule, and presented a topic on post-COVID future trends and information technology. The today's session focused on the blockchain technology and how it's. using in banking sector how automation system is working based on iot and machine learning how augmented reality and virtual reality working and where we can use so all the videos is very interesting and really it's inspiring so it's a really very useful and enlightening session uh, thank you very much sir uh, for spending uh, time with us uh, the past one uh, that is the how so the session is really interesting and informative to all the participants as well as the who are all attended the today's session really thank you very much sir and i would like to appreciate all the participants for their active participations once again thank you all okay thank you guys it's wonderful to interact with you all thanks a lot uh, as i told you you can connect me on linkedin if you have anything you can write to me okay thank you guys come on ask me number this is my mobile number by the way okay thanks all thank you sir thank you thank okay. you very much sir thank you guys bye bye yes dear participants i posted that feedback link in the chat window Yes, all of you kindly fill in, and you can leave. Uh, 
yes try once again just now i enabled yeah please try one more time Yes, I changed the settings. Please uh, try now. Uh, yeah, just a minute, ma'am. So I posted that mail ID in the chat window. Yes, the feedback link is enabled now. Please try. This is the message which I posted in chat window. It's a today's guest phone number. 